Hey guys, this is Oli from Oli's Big Picture and after living for almost 10 years in China, I think now is finally the right time to make a video about the most common used apps for you and for foreigners in general that help you to get around China. China is very digitalized and you pay here everything with your phone. There's almost no cash anymore. Therefore, it's very essential that right from the beginning you learn what apps to use and basically, and most importantly, how to use those apps to your advantage. There are so many apps here, therefore I'm gonna split the video in two parts. In the first part, I'm gonna show you the most essential apps you need definitely here in China. And the second one is more about how to get around in China, how to travel in China, and how to use the apps for like your daily lifestyle. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Welcome to the second part of my China apps guide. Now we're gonna focus more here on the maps apps as well as how to get some Chinese apps and how to find your favorite restaurants and how to travel around China. At the end, I will also show you how I made it possible that you can see here above my Chinese characters are also the Latin letters, we call it Pinyin here, that you can not just see the characters, but you also know how to read and pronounce them. I will show you this in the end of the video as well. But let's get into it. The first thing here, you go into the maps to check out what options do we have. We have of course on the Android phone, Google Maps, and on the iPhone, we have iMap. And the iMap works without VPN. It's quite good, it's quite recent with the data set here in China, while unfortunately, Google Maps is not working without VPN and is not very up to date. Therefore, the iPhone here definitely has an advantage while Android users should find some other map solutions. For example, this could be Maps.me. Maps.me, you can download the offline maps, but I, to be honest, use it just as a backup, as the last solution. I rely on the Chinese apps. The Chinese apps, unfortunately, for maps are only in Chinese. I couldn't find yet any map app in China that is also translated into English. If you know one of them, please tell me and my community definitely comment it down below. For now, I rely personally on Baidu Maps and AMAP. These are some of the biggest um, yeah, companies for maps here. And my personal favorite I want to show you is AMAP. AMAP, you can see here, is in, Eng is in Chinese, unfortunately but you can play around quite easy with it. When you get a Chinese address, you can copy paste into it, or let's just choose now here, for example, this random address, and I want to go there. Then you can click down here to lead you there by car. Of course, most of us don't have a car, right? But you can play around, and it also leads you there how to go by bus. It also gonna lead you there how to bike, that's very important for us who have learned how to use a shared bike here in Shanghai or in other cities. And the next thing is, it also shows you how to walk. And you do not have to understand the Chinese characters. As you can see, there are small symbols for a bike or for walking there. So you can basically play around with it and find your way. Another thing I like about those apps of maps in China is, you have plenty of taxi choices. You don't have only to rely on Diddy as the most foreigners. You can also call from any of those other taxi services a taxi. You have to enter your address. Where you are, it will find by GPS. And then you can say how much are you willing to pay and select the different offers of the taxi apps. And then you can use it to call a taxi and you might have more chances to use it to get one how to link it to your bank account. You link it through Alipay or WeChat Pay. Do this with a Chinese colleague, do this with a Chinese friend. He can help you once the WeChat Pay or Alipay works to link it to your AMAP very easily. Definitely ask for help. Then the next thing of course is Diddy. Diddy here is in English when you downloaded it from a foreign app store. And as I said before in the part one, Diddy understands Chinese addresses when you copy paste it in or also English addresses. So it's very nice, it's very useful and you can link it directly with your bank card. You don't need Alipay or WeChat Pay, you can link it directly to your foreign 
bank card. So if you, for whatever reason, get not WeChat Pay or Alipay running, try to get the Diddy app itself and then link your foreign bank card to Diddy and then you can get a taxi with this. Very, very useful. The next thing I like for the big cities in China, for Shanghai, for Guangzhou, for Beijing, of course, is the metro system. The metro system is huge. I love it. And it's very inexpensive and very reliable. Therefore, I love this app Explore Shanghai or Explore Beijing because it shows you all the different metro stops. You can change the language into English and Chinese as well as it can tell you how to go, where to go. For example, we are now on West Nanjing Lu in downtown of Shanghai and we want to go, let's say just for example, to Pudong Airport. We click on it and it will show us how to go and how long it will take. So here now you can see if you have to interchange somewhere, how to go, how much you should pay and how long it takes. Very useful app, get it and play around a little bit with it. It's super, super nice. Okay, that's all for the maps. Now let's do the next one, how you might get some Chinese apps to download that you cannot find in the Play Store. For Xiaomi users, I have here the Get Apps, for example. It's the own store, app store from Xiaomi. But you can also check out, these are the most used third-party app stores here in China. And the biggest one is called My App. It's from Tencent, what is the mother company of WeChat. And you can just, as an Android user, download an APK file. And then with this APK file, you can install it on your phone. And through this app store, you will find many, many more Chinese apps. Now can we come to the fun part. Once you are settled here in China and you get around a little bit, of course, the next most important step is to find your favorite restaurants and your favorite places to go. So for this one, I love to use Tianping. There's also Meitran. Meitran and Tianping, I think their competitors is quite similar. For me personally, I show you now Tianping because this is what I'm used to. And this app is mainly to find your favorite bars and restaurants and venues to go out. On the top left here, you can see the chicken with the drink. I don't know why they chose this symbol, might change in the future. You click on it and then you can see all kinds of restaurants. You can also just click here on the top on the map and then it will show all the different restaurants around you to find and to click on it. And then you can just, for example, now click on this one. Then you click again on those photos and it will load for you this restaurant. Here you can see the address. When you have the address, you can click on it and it will lead you the way there. You can click here again and you can choose by do map or any other map you have on your phone to open it into the map. So you can just follow your map. Very convenient as well as here you get the pictures. You click on this big picture here on the top and you see how the restaurant looks like, what kind of food they might offer. So you get a first idea if you want to go there or not. And another thing I find very useful here is you have some coupons. Of course, those coupons are not easy to understand. So for this, you would have to ask the waiter or someone who can help you yeah, to understand what a coupon is about. What I want to tell you is this kind of apps, they have for the most restaurants some nice discounts through this kind of coupons, which you pay then, you guessed it, with your WeChat Pay or Alipay. And another nice thing I like here, you can click on this one and you see their top dishes, their top bestsellers. So you get even a better idea what are the dishes, what is the food about they sell. And you can just basically show the waiter the different kind of food you like. You don't even have to maybe understand the menu or understand what is written here. You can just point on the photos and the waiter will get it for you. Very nice, very convenient app. Another thing you can do with this app, you can get your cinema tickets. Here on the top right, you have a small cat symbol. Also, I don't know why they chose this one. And when you click on it, you can choose all different kind of movies. So it's very nice to find the cinema. When you click, for example, on here, 
there's some cinemas around me, an IMAX, I can see what movies they have, for example the new Barbie, not anymore for today, but let's check, maybe they have it for tomorrow, yes they do, then you can click on it and you can choose your seats where you want to sit on the map and then you can pay the ticket directly online, you get a QR code and with this QR code you can go to the cinema. The most movies in China are in English. When it's a foreign movie, it's 90% in English with Chinese subtitles. If it's a Chinese movie or a Korean movie or a Thai movie, it's in their native language, but the Western movies are in English language. So it's very nice, very useful to use this app to watch your favorite movie in the original language. Then the next thing I use quite often is Ölema. Ölema and Matran are both used for deliveries. Matran also has the overview over the restaurants and does similar things like Tian Ping. However, I got used to Ölema and this one is very nice and handy to order Wai Mai, like takeout. This is very popular here in China. Almost all the workers in the offices and anywhere they order their lunch through Wai Mai. They order their dinner through Wai Mai. It's very, very popular. And when you click here on the top left, you can see all the restaurants around you and choose. And when you click on it, no worries, everything is with pictures. You don't have to read any Chinese. Anything you can add to your basket is already there with a photo. So you can at least roughly have an idea what you order. And then the next thing here, what I really love is you cannot only order food with it. You can also order anything from the supermarkets. You can just order anything you need for your daily life as well as also items. Like I was in the past looking for a USB cable because I was in need of a USB cable and I couldn't go to a store so quickly. So I could just find some USB adapter or anything and it will be delivered to me within one hour. A good thing here about Shanghai is now, of course, you also have Aldi, a German supermarket. So this is where I do my groceries. You see everything is with pictures, everything there, what the foreigners like to eat. I just put it in my basket. I don't waste time anymore to go to the supermarket, to choose my stuff and to come back. I can just do this while I'm on my way home from work. And then when I arrive at home, not much later, my food and my groceries will arrive to my doorstep. I love it. It's super convenient. And now you're going to ask, of course, how do I get the address in this app? This I would recommend ask the Chinese friend, a study buddy, a work colleague to help you to set up your address. Also, when you are here in a hotel, go to the reception and ask the receptionist to help you to put in the address in Ölema so you can order food or any items you need directly to your doorstep in the hotel or to your dormitory or anywhere else. It's super, super useful, super popular, highly, highly recommended. Then this green app here is also very useful, but this is for the advanced people. You definitely need here a Chinese friend help you to set it up because here you get all the groceries and anything you need for the daily life that you can buy in the supermarkets. And even here you can see it's all with pictures still very easy for us foreigners to use. And the last thing, the fun part is, of course, the website here in Shanghai called Smart Shanghai. There are similar offers in other cities as well. And Smart Shanghai, you can also download an app for it and it will give you suggestions about dining for the restaurants as well, about the nightlife and about the housing. Like you can find here shared apartments, also apartments for yourself. So this app, Smart Shanghai, definitely check it out, what it has to offer for you. Very useful for foreigners who live in Shanghai. Now, last but not least for delivery is of course Taobao. I love Taobao. I find Taobao 10 times better than Amazon because it has everything. Everything you can imagine about food, grocery, spices, anything, drones, like technology stuff, anything of the closest. I think I also bought this shirt there, TVs, fridges, sofas, everything for your household, for your daily life, you can find on Taobao. And of course, most of the time, much cheaper than on Amazon. 
because it comes from China and it also has a much bigger selection. Of course, now it's all in Chinese, like the most apps. And for me, it's a dark mode because I put my phone into dark mode. But you can ask again your receptionist or your Chinese friend to help you to set up the address. You need to link it to your Alipay. It must be paid with Alipay. You cannot use your WeChat Pay. And once you had a Chinese friend to help you to set it up, it's super easy because, for example, you can just go what I do. You go to Pleco. Then let's say, for example, I want to buy a new luggage. I just copy. No, this one. I just copy the head word. Then I go to Taobao again. I just copy paste it in. And now it shows me all the different luggages. And here you can see a difference. This with the red symbol is from Tmall and those without the red symbols are from normal stores. Tmall is basically the flagship stores of big brands like for example of Adidas, Nike and others. So these are the official stores from big companies while the Taobao stores, anything else can be a huge provider, can be also a small private seller, can be anything. For me, to be honest, it doesn't make a big difference. I don't care so much if I order something from the Tmall or from the Taobao. And now when we, for example, now go on this luggage, you don't need to understand any Chinese. You go here on the top right to choose the size. You can choose the color and you see everything here is with pictures. Super easy for you to find the items you're looking for. As well, if you don't know how to call what you're looking for, you also can take pictures of it or put pictures into the app. I love it because it's much, much better in picture recognition than Amazon. Like for example, here now, I need maybe some more of aloe vera and you see it finds me all the stores with aloe vera. Maybe I want more of my favorite muesli. I'm a German, I love muesli. I cannot find it in the most stores here in China, so I need to order it online. And I just take a picture of my muesli and there it is. All the different offers of exactly the muesli I was looking for. Very powerful app, very, very useful. And now after Taobao, we come to the last one, to travel in China, to travel around. Very important when you want to see something more than just the city you arrived. I use personally for hotels the most booking.com and trip.com not only because these two are in English but also all the offers for hotels you will find there they are for foreigners because some hotels especially some cheap hotels in China they are not allowed to accommodate foreigners they need to apply a license for it and some cheap hotels they might save some money and they don't want to apply for it therefore if you use for example sea trip or Chuna very powerful apps, which are unfortunately only in Chinese. You can find way more hotels, maybe sometimes also cheaper, but you have to ensure that this hotel then can also accommodate foreigners. Therefore, trip.com, for example, is the English version of Ctrip. Another very useful thing here on trip.com besides the hotels is you can also book here your flights and you can also book your trains here. So it's very useful and you can pay it with your WeChat Pay, with Alipay or your foreign credit card. So any flights or any trains you want to take in China, I book mostly through trip.com, link it with my foreign bank card and then I'm good to go. Highly recommend it. Another thing, unfortunately Airbnb, I think last year left China, therefore there's no Airbnb anymore. But there's another app I can recommend you to find apartments for long term and short term. This one is here, the Shanghai Search Apartments as well as for Beijing and Shenzhen. Not all cities are there, but mostly the big ones. And then you can find here all different kind of short term and long term apartments to rent for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months. Pretty good app. Definitely recommend it. So that's all for now. Now I will tell you and show you how you can set up your phone. I don't know if it works for iPhone, but it works for Xiaomi, for Huawei, and I think it should also work for Samsung phones that you can read now above those Chinese characters, those Chinese pinyin.
basically the Latin characters. You go on settings, then you go in your phone on fonts, and then you can choose more fonts. And here you get usually like these different themes for your wallpapers, for your design of your phone. You can also go directly to your team store. And then when you're on fonts, type in Pinyin. You just type in, you need a Chinese keyboard or you copy paste it from Pleco. And then you use here the Pinyin, this one, press search. And now it shows me all different fonts that have the Chinese characters, but on top also the Pinyin. Super helpful, super useful for China beginners and for China learners. Definitely check it out if you have this possibility as well. Thank you very much for watching. Definitely check out the other part of my China app guide. Please leave me a like and a comment if you want anything else to know. And please subscribe, it would really help our channel to grow. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.